We're going to bring up some of the people here. We're going to talk about the four Beatitudes. The first people we're going to bring up is Richard Malaki. He's the poster child for transformation, by the way, right there. Richard Malaki. We're going to be talking about the four Beatitudes. We got chemo coming up as well. And then um, we got Ivalani and Timmy's uh, uh, testimony. But I want to introduce my friend Richard Malaki to share a brief and amazing testimony of what the epic battle was like and how it changed. So put your hands together with Richard Malaki. Richard, go for it, brother. Thank you, family. Um, yeah, it was one of the situations at my, in my, uh, on my street where our neighbor passed away and his tenants stayed there. But her son was, um, he started to cause havoc in the, with our neighbors. So our neighbors was getting angry because we would call police and police would tell us they cannot do nothing. Then we call our um, department, Hawaiian Homes. They said, you know, it was going back and forth. So we started getting mad at the boy. We started getting mad at the police. We started getting mad at the Hawaiian department. And it was going on for about for months. And then pastor told me, hey, we could try to get that one. Tear a on a guy. So that Friday I went, go call and uh, talk to the lady and I said, hey, if the Tiro, the guy can come back? Oh yeah, he can come back. I said, what? He said, yeah, he can come back. It's for you no look at him and he no look at you. I said, ah, no sense. <laughs> so Sunday I came, I came to church Sunday and I told pastor, you know, I'm not going to get the Tiro. He said, why? Because if I get him, he can still come. But you know what I'm going to do, Pastor? I'm going to stay home. I'm going to pray. I'm going to gather my, my, my neighbors, and I'm going to share with them that they can do what they want to do, and I'm going to pray for them. As well, I'll pray for the boy. So I started doing that. And then we brought up our, uh, we was having men's ministry at, you know, our brother Stephen's house. Then we brought the men's up, and we started, as a group, we started praying too for the situation. And you know, that's where you learn patience and obedience. And for me, it was obedience, you know, going back into his words and studying and reading his word. And patience was, you know, our prayers, you know, we like things happen fast, but that point was still, was still, you know, moving slow. You know, unfortunately, he burnt the house, you know. Yeah. What Richard was trying to do is prevent another Hawaii yeah. Kai incident. So what yeah. happened was in Hawaii Kai, um, they, they burnt the house down. Somebody got shot. Two police officers died as well. He was trying to prevent that from happening. There was a lot of confusion, chaos, limits, limitations with the jurisdictions yeah. from government agencies. He was trying to prevent that from happening. So he burnt, he burnt the house. But I believe when he burnt the house, that's when things started to move. Because the boy came back. He got arrested. He came back a week later. And then we called, you know, I called the department and speak with Brother Juan and, you know, what take would take weeks, forget. He came out the next day, Monday. That was on Sunday I called. He came Monday, put up signs already on the, around the house. And then weeks later, guys, when there's an abandoned house, people would come. So I had guys coming, so I had to ch chase them out. Then I called past, the, hey, we got to do something. No more gate, front gates, they're open, there's people coming. So he called one again, and what would take weeks for yet, three days later, they built one gate, put a brand new gate for us. So, you know, things been happening, but the blessing with all this was the beginning when nobody was working together, the, the departments, the agencies. Today, I can tell you, they're working together with different agencies, and my situation in my neighborhood is small. Compared to the ones down the road, the, the neighbors down the road, their one is huge. But what we've been doing is working with them, and uh, you know, I, I thought I wouldn't be in meetings with government people sitting down. I've been telling them, you know, I'm sorry, but I don't belong here. <laughs> and that's with that's with you know, top government people. So I'm blessed to be part of that and, you know, continue working with the neighbors down the road and with their situation. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you. You know, one of the things that, one of the things, he's, Nanakuli changed when his heart went change. 
And then we go back to Luke chapter 10, and we're looking at destroying anger with blessings. Amen. So Richard learned how to bless them, not blast them. Once Richard started to do that, all of a sudden, brother man is in, in, in meetings with government officials, I mean, uh, agents and all of that sitting down and they're like how can we help you it's amazing we drive to downtown at one of the meetings i park the car we back up and then he looks at and, and he looks at me he starts laughing like bus laughing like out of nowhere i look at him like what he said bah me and you I say what are you talking about who would have thought that me and you would be on this side of the law working with them <laughs> that's him that's him right there so great job bro yeah, so love you, brother. So proud of you, man. So we used to be partners in crime. Now we're partners in Christ. But he was the one who used to get me in trouble, though. Love you, bro. But going for the city, what we learn is the easy part. It's dealing with the ghosts of failures and being able to bless people in our own family that hurt us. We learn in Nanakuli, family ministry is a hard ministry. But Kimo's going to share his story of how he was healed of childhood trauma and trauma and learned to bless his own family. Would you put your hands together for Brother Kimo? Love you, Kimo. Thanks Thank for sharing, you. bro. Well, for me, um, it started out with this five-year-old boy, and I'm going to tell you a story real quick. Basically, at the age of five, he just um, went through so much pain, so much hurt, so much anger. At the age of five, basically this... This boy, he grew up, you know, he watched his, um, his mom get brutally beaten by the man that's supposed to love her. You know, he seen her um, not just get hit with his hands, but I mean, he seen vacuum cleaners go flying at her. He seen uh, brooms, mop sticks, pipes. He even witnessed, um, you know, this man that's supposed to love her I mean, choking the life out of her. And not only that, this, this boy would get um, beatenly in, in the worst ways. And I know one of them was constantly, he would grab um, this boy by his, um, his private parts and throw him against the wall. Um, time after time again, he, he experienced that just because his father would rage. The boy experienced sitting in the car with his brothers and sisters and his, his mom. Well, the dad is on the other side in another car, full blast, ramming them, ramming them into the, trying to push them over uh, this big ravine. And, the, and, you know, everybody's screaming, everybody's crying. This boy also witnessed um, some crazy crazy things you know you would think this is the man that's supposed to be loving me this is the man who's supposed to be caring for me providing for me teaching me mentoring me but it was it was not so and when this boy grew up he basically was filled with aces adverse child experience hurts, habits, and hang-ups, and over 40 years, this boy held onto that until he was into his well-married life. He had five sons of his own, and yet that pain was still there. This man was even part of the kingdom of the Lord, but that pain was still there. You know, it would rewind over and over and over. The traumatizing part was we was kidnapped. This man took me and my brother, my three-year-old brother, and took us away. I didn't know where we was. Last thing I knew was in Kona. But I we used to run away from home because so much people would be coming in. We'd get locked out of the house. Me and my brother would be sitting on the, the sidewalk, and this Caucasian elderly couple would always come out and take care of us. Just so much mess. But the blessing is this. Four years ago, I was invited to MGMC uh, to take this class, Healing Hearts, and I know a lot of you experienced it. And you know what? As I went, I heard Pastor Rob Gross speaking just a little about it, and I wanted it. What I wanted was freedom. I needed to be set free from all my hurt habits and hang-ups. And during that, 
that small group time, I had Brandon Gross, his son. He was my facilitator. When he spoke over me, and I finally got, you know, to release all of that, I, I took all my hurt, all my anger, all the pain, and I finally nailed it to the cross, never to take it back again. And I received healing. But this is what the Lord said to me. He said, Kimo, you got your healing. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go track your biological dad down. And I was like, what? Are you, you know, I was like, this has got to be crazy. But I did. I tracked him down. He was still alive. And you know what? I called him up. And I introduced myself again. And he knew exactly who I was. 45 years went by. When I said my name wow. to him, he knew who I was. And I told him the reason why I'm calling. I had to share with him the pain that I went through. Because I needed it to be released. And as I shared that pain with him, he, he broke down and he cried on the phone. And he said, I am so sorry. Can you forgive me? And I said, I already have. I already have forgiven you. He said, but the real reason I'm calling, if I had this hurt habit and hang up, you must be holding on to strongholds as well because of what had happened. And I want you to be set free of what <laughs> had taken place at that time. And you know what? We got together. We spoke. He was set free. I was set free. Healing came to both of us. And that's just the way God works. See, Jesus is aloha. And he can do it. We can do all things to Christ who strengthen us. Thank you, family. Amen, you. amen. Hey, stay here. Richard, come back up. Come back up. Here's the thing. I don't know if we can pull up our PowerPoint, but see, we, we were learning, Exhibit A, that it is possible to change the tran to transform the city, but we got to destroy anger with blessings. And bless and not blast. That's the key. So we're learning that we're fighting two battles, one out there and one right here. How many of you can relate to that? How many of you want this blessing and impartation for breakthrough? If so, stand right now. Stand. Stand and raise your hands that you're ready to catch the Super Bowl touchdown because this is better than that. So, Father, we release and impart the blessings of us as fathers into everyone here and today that they will too will destroy anger by blessing and not blasting. And the word will go forth and not come back void. It will demolish and destroy strongholds so the kingdom of God will come at hand. Say, I receive it. I receive All right. Put your hands together again for the Lord. Thanks, Kimo.